Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Church Leadership Lab. We are thankful that you are listening. And our hope uh, with all of these conversations is that they are helpful in empowering healthy churches. So thanks for taking the time. Uh, we have a really good conversation that we're going to bring to you. Uh, but before we do, let me introduce your hosts, myself and Casey. I like it. And Thanks. You're, you didn't say your name. You just said myself. I know. I, I, I'm i not a big, I'm not a big, was that third person, right? When you're like, yeah. if yeah. I were to say to you, like, well, Scott always says. <laughs> I, I would, would not, laugh at you in your face. <laughs> yeah. Vibe, not my vibe. So I would very kindly pull you aside and be like, don't ever say that again. Hey, yeah. So about that. Um, <laughs> I don't know how that sounded in your head, but out yeah. here. It was dumb. Please don't Here's do that. that. It sounded to all of us. Yeah. yeah. No, and I'm saying that because I genuinely care and respect you. So yeah. mm -mm. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You bet. No problem. Hey, I have a little uh, little bonus behind the scenes um, mm -hmm. for our for our listeners. You know how? So actually, I just watched um, the second Avatar movie. Right? The, Did the you? water one. Okay. The, yeah. wa the water one. That's the tagline. Avatar, the water the wa one. The water <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm slow on the uptake for a lot of, a lot of movies. So, like, oh, have seen you it. seen this? It came out four years ago. I'm like, not yet, but I'm gonna <laughs> it's on get my there. Cue. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then they, so I, so we watch it recently. But then they have like the how they made it, you know? Oh it's, yeah. Which that's that movie is it's bonkers, mm -hmm. like the stuff that mm -hmm. they do. But everyone likes a little behind the scenes, you know, like, mm -hmm. like show me behind the camera and stuff. And so I have, no, our listeners can't see this, but if you were to like, if the camera were to pan down and you see right here, I have a bunch of things that like I fidget with all the time. Yeah. yeah like it's just under, so I got like these little, uh, these are for camera equipment. They're like these little, mm -hmm. um, like two screws and I just like screw them together and like kind of play with them. I got like a, I'm too cheap to buy an official fidget thing. You know, my kids have those like crazy, yeah. but I just find them randomly. And so that's just a little behind the scenes for everybody. I've got all kinds, like it's too embarrassing to tell you what's on my desktop because it's right. It needs to be cleaned. It's a dumping yeah. ground. Yeah. That happens. That happens. Maybe I got a good another amount time. of instruments. Yeah. I'll, I'll clean up and then be able to share with you what's yeah. happening over here. Still got my trusty calculator, I, though. That's whoever did not see the episode about Scott's calculator from 1984 needs to go back right now. Also, um, a little little lesser known fact about my calculator. If you see <laughs> close to here, it says 4imprint. Um, you know that company, 4imprint? I don't you, know. You can get like swag, like whatever, like mugs, oh, USB yeah, yeah, drives, yeah. Yeah, calculators. Yeah like printed for your thing. Right. Well, I used to order a lot of stuff from there and they would send like, they would send, it's called the blue box. And they'll, Ooh. and it's like, do you want to sample these things? You know what I mean? Gotcha. To see, do I want this? And sometimes if it wasn't in the blue box, you could request something else. Mm -hmm. So I may or may not have acquired this calculator by saying, I want a desktop calculator. <laughs> let, me, let me sample it. Let me see what it's like. Let me and give it a shot. Is. It's it's working phenomenally. Yeah. Well, so. I do appreciate all that. I also appreciate that you finally saw I haven't seen Avatar, but I will. This is totally off topic. This past weekend I saw Mission Impossible. The first it's one? The new one. <laughs> I know, I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't I don't Isn't know. The first the names. one out in like nineteen ninety seven or something. Maybe. I don't know the names of any of them. And the same even, thing with all of the uh, James Bond. I don't know any of the titles. Like the that, one where they did this thing. Yeah, I don't know because they all sound the same, but it's pretty it, great. Not gonna isn't lie to you. It, isn't it? Uh, when did that come out? Did it come out like two years ago. Which one? The well, what, this the is Mission the problem. Impossible? I don't even know, and <laughs> so we don't know the names talking. of them. <laughs> Mission Impossible came out this weekend. There's a brand new one. Oh, and I'm okay. sorry, I'm saying this weekend as if we know what date and time. July yeah. 2023. There's a brand new Mission Impossible. Um, something. It's part one. I didn't know it's a two-parter, oh, so I'm okay. going to have to watch it again when the next one comes out. But I learned two things this weekend is my okay. whole point. I learned that Tom Cruise is 61 years old. Wow. That melted my brain a little bit. He Number is, two, uh, I'm not going to give away the movie because I'm pretty sure it's in the trailer. He dies, There's right? a scene where he drives a like motorbike off a cliff. Okay. He legit did that. 
Speaking wow. of, I'm getting to a point. You said behind the scenes this morning during my weird insomnia, I saw a video about the behind the scenes of that stunt. It's not a stunt. He literally drove a bike off a cliff and then uh, parachuted, but didn't just do it one time. That's not a one take situation. So how many times did he do it? A lot of them. He did it wow. a lot of times. He had to, I don't know, there's a whole video. And again, I was half asleep. But yeah. if a 61-year-old man can drive a bike off a cliff over and over and over, I feel like I could like exercise more. Yeah. I could be doing more. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> that's, that's where I, I was getting about that. I can make it to Pilates once a week <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> whatever everyone, anyone's into. I've done Pilates. Extremely I difficult. I could eat way. more kale. That's yeah. it. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> So we were, yeah, our fitness is inspired by Tom Cruise. He's, he's um, that is wild. That is good wild. luck transitioning this situation I've created for you into today's yeah. intro. I'm not going to do it. Sometimes when, when a <laughs> task is too insurmountable, you just call it out <laughs> and you just hit it. You just put a period on that sentence, a couple enters on the space or on the keyboard and start a new paragraph. And that's so what with that being said, with that being said, this <laughs> week's episode uh, is with Jason Kovacs. We were able to sit down in person with him um, not too long ago and have a conversation. Uh, Jason is the executive director of the Gospel Care Collective uh, and received his Master's of Arts from Reformed Theological Seminary. Uh, and is a gospel-centered, clinically informed counselor. Uh, he has specialized training in trauma care through TBRI and is a member of the Association of Biblical Counselors. He serves on the Council of the Biblical Counseling Coalition and the board of the Canadian Biblical Counseling Coalition. Uh, he's also an adjunct, adjunct professor teaching biblical counseling at Heritage Theological Seminary and Miller College of the Bible. Uh, he's been married for over 20 years to Shonda, and they have five kids. And we enjoyed this conversation immensely. I know because we were talking all about mental health and pastors and how do we um, how do, how do ministry leaders cultivate that, grow mm -hmm. in that? Um, what does sabbatical look like? How do you mm -hmm. rest well? All of that stuff. I think a really, you know, timely conversation. Yeah, I really love this. I loved that we were there together and mental health is something that obviously we're, we're doing a better job of talking about it. Like, let me, let me lead with that. The good news yeah. is it is so much less stigmatized as it used to be, but we still have so much work to do. Yeah. Jason is clearly better appropriate to talk about this topic than I am. You just read his credentials. He's very smart and well-trained. Yeah. I'm just a fan of like, hey, let's talk about the things that aren't going so well. I don't feel great. I've got some stress. I have no idea how to process this. All of this is mental health and we've never been fantastic. We're better than before, but there's still so much work to do. So I love that they exist and I love the way that it's like right there in, in the top of what they are gospel centered, but clinically informed. Yeah. So I know yeah. you and I, we have to do a good job of not bringing our own personal thoughts, opinions, or theology. We're, that is not our job. It is to right. facilitate the conversation. But in this area, I will say sometimes it makes me sad when we lean only on, well, did you pray about it? Yeah. Is your faith strong enough? Like there really is a balance between science and faith. And I love that they really, gospel care really leans in right, right into the heart of that. And that yep. makes me proud to bring the conversation forward and go, they are nailing it. At totally. least in my humble, un, uninformed decision, <laughs> like from at least where I'm sitting from, they're, they're, yeah. they're nailing it. Well, I know, yeah, I know that we we address that with Jason and talk about mm -hmm. that, and I I love kind of the way that that he unpacks some of that and why why you need both. But yeah, there's there's really can be a pretty big def deficiency if you lose one or the other. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that that's one point of many that I think was really helpful and, and fruitful from this conversation. So mm -hmm. we hope that you find uh, you find the same to be true for you, and that you enjoy this conversation that we had with Jason Kovacs. Well, Jason, thanks so much for um, for being here, for chatting with us. One thing that we do ask people, we kind of start off with, there's the public bio, you know, that makes it to the back of the book or the yeah. conference thing. But there's always a couple things that don't make that, that all your friends and family would know about you. So what is something like that for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I like really good coffee. 
Okay. Mm. And uh, and I like mountain biking. Nice. There's two things. How okay. on my bio? I have a question because this this will determine like how crazy of a coffee person you are. Uh-oh. Like how okay. how far out of your way would you go to find oh. like a great coffee spot? L- like. Like I mean, we'll, we'll change the like our Google map. We'll yeah. we'll map our route across the country just to hit good coffee. I love it. Yeah, um, like the, we're strategic. The opposite of that I. is if you are like at a hotel and you are nowhere near, are you going to skip the coffee altogether? No. See, I like. Thankfully, I'm not so like Obsessed. bound to good coffee that yeah. I can still drink. The church coffee yeah. and right. the hotel lobby coffee. You still hang with the, the lowly, you the know, soldiers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll suffer through it. All right. It's but, more like a missional thing. You're yeah. like, I'm hoping to becoming all things to all men. <laughs> I'm hoping to open your eyes yeah. so right. that you could live. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. but I ha- yeah, but I I drink it and I'm like, oh man, this is not good. Yeah, this yeah. is yeah. not this good. It's garbage yeah. water. <laughs> oh my, I'm praying for you right yeah. now. So yeah. it's purely to like wake up yeah. at that point yeah that's fair <laughs> that's great yeah well one of the things um that i know we're going to talk about is what does it look like for pastors to get healthy um to rest well sabbaticals mental health counseling all of that i think if we could just kind of frame the conversation though and hear your thoughts around what are you seeing right now when it comes to the health of pastors um and, and whether it be emotional health mental just holistic health. What what are you all seeing as the state of, of health right now with pastors? Yeah, they're I mean they're struggling. I was a pastor myself, and uh, you know, it's it's hard just just at being a pastor, but especially over the last few years with COVID and pandemic and and not only the pandemic, but all the other issues, racial justice issues, uh, LGBTQ issues, like every major issue that is controversial and would you know for any pastor be really difficult to shepherd people through happened in the last three years was like thrust upon pastors so all that the job became that much harder and then you had this division in churches in terms of people so passionately you know passionately advocating for this view or that view and so you've got more conflict than ever before that that guys have experienced. And so I think the toll of ministry created such a a moment for so many pastors of crisis. Uh, Like, how do I do this job? How do I do it well when I'm being criticized in ways that I never have before? You know, we talk about it. uh, But it was like for the first time I, I found pastors, I've talked to pastors every day and for the first time, I have guys saying, man, I'm having panic attacks. Right. I've never had that. I'm having anxiety, like stress that is not only emotional, but physiological. Yeah. Um, guys like wanting to give up and quit for the first time, like guys that love the church and love pastoring and are, are just, have just been brought to the end of their ropes, like mm-hmm. to realizing this is overwhelming yeah and i don't know how to keep doing this yeah what are you what are you saying in those conversations what's um yeah what what have been some of the ways that you've helped because we have obviously pastors church leaders listening to this they might need to hear some of those things so well i mean the first thing is i don't talk much it's listening Mm. um there's a lot of talking and and i found you know, for, for a lot of folks, what is so rare is somebody that will just listen yeah. Yeah. and say, man, I'm so sorry. Like that, that is awful. That's hard. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. Like um, just being a pres- safe presence and person for them. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like much, but, but it, that I think is so rare today. Guys feel alone. Like in the midst of all this, there's also the loneliness and the isolation that, right. that they feel. But so the first thing, I guess, I, I mean, I'm listening, but I'm also saying, hey, I, I'm sorry. I'm here yeah. for you. How can I help? Uh, what do you need? Yeah. Because, uh, again, for so many ministry leaders, they're pouring out. They're pouring out. Exactly. They're the ones asking, right, right, right. what do you need? What do you need? Yeah. So to have somebody sit with them and have the time. Like, I, I think that's the other thing is like, hey, 
what do you need? And if you don't even have an answer, yeah, because a lot of them like, well, I, I mean, I, I, no, no, nobody's asked me that, and right, I don't even know how long. And so saying, hey, think about it, mm-hmm. and I, I'm here, um, and just giving them that space, yeah, yeah. Uh, to listen and support mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. process what what it's been like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, these last few years, yeah. What you, this this what you said just made me think of something that I know I is difficult in ministry, which is forming true, genuine, vulnerable friendships. Um, Mm, Yeah. What role have you seen friendships? And I'm not talking about, you know, these are people that I can casually hang out with or, I mean, that's good. Right. But friendships with people that it's like, I know you and I know the things about you that you don't want anyone else to know. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, what, oh, what role have you seen that play in health or the lack thereof for specifically pastors? Yeah, I mean, I think it's maybe the number one mm. factor in terms of can I keep going? Wow. Yeah. And can I make it? Uh, and and that, that the hard thing is it's so rare. It's so hard. Yeah. And so sometimes, you know, as a as a professional counselor, you know, I'm seeing them because they don't have that. And or that's that seems really risky and really scary. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and so part of the counseling process is is grieving that, lamenting that, practicing lament and the freedom to lament, mm. Mm. and also to encourage and consider and help uh, ministry leaders begin to move towards developing those kind of friendships. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes it only takes one person kind of opening up and yeah. saying. And I want to let you in. I want you to, I want to be known and I want to connect in that way. But, but I, yeah, I, it, it's, it's huge. It's yeah. huge. So I, we want to advocate for that proactively because, because I, I'm in the position where I'm seeing the result of not having that so yeah. often. Well, you were a pastor and I know Scott's bivocational. He's a pastor right now. I was in full-time ministry for 15 years. I think there's a really strange almost like a multiple personality situation where there is your ministry leader, what I can show, and then who I would love to be, my my true self. And not that they're not the same person, but there's like a a burden that you bear of how much do I reveal to an entire congregation and expect them to still see me as a leader. You know, there's, Mm -hmm. it's like, but I don't, I don't share everything with my children that I would, Mm -hmm. my friend or, you know, an adult, I think that might break down that authenticity where then that snowballs. And before you know it, it's been years and years. You're like, yeah. no one knows me. And I have, mm-hmm. I can't even begin to be my true self because there's mm-hmm. such a difference between my leader position as a minister and my human yeah. position as a human with real struggles. And like it's, to have a listening ear is probably a really big step in the right direction. It, it really is. I mean, and it, it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. You know, Adam oh, yeah. and Eve, sin and disobey God and the what do you see you see guilt shame fear yeah and what do they do they They hide hide, right yeah and from they hide from God they hide from each other and really themselves as well and then they cover themselves as well and and we're doing Mm -hmm. the same thing I do I have my own ways of hiding and covering and and so you know it what what the gospel does is brings us out yeah or yeah. you know that that god brings us back out of hiding back into relationship you know sort of restoring that original nakedness yeah. <laughs> of yeah. soul right they <laughs> right, right, right. yeah, don't want to like you know nakedness of soul and being yeah. known and loved uh, yeah. but that's scary yeah that it's is vulnerable. so scary it's so vulnerable yeah. and it feels really risky as a pastor yeah well, yeah how can i lead if else. they know that i messed up well, yeah, yeah, probably better than you think, but that's a really scary place to step into. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a friend who does this really well, um, and I've not done it really well. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I engaging with him has been really, it's been really interesting to see his willingness to be really open mm-hmm. and vulnerable with like, yeah, this is where I'm failing, you know, yeah. and not just the stuff that it's like, mm, that's like kind of socially acceptable to say right but we have this other these other things that we kind of keep hidden like really be open but also then to see how that's impacted his leadership and shepherding ability um i think there's something about that there's that lie that 
if I if I go to that place, yeah. then it will, you know, disqualify or ruin any chance of leading. Right. Yeah. And I think that is a uh, I think that's a lie that keeps a lot of people in bondage. Yeah. If you know me, there's no way you can love me. Is that lie? Yeah. Oh, that's good. And so, you know, to be known and and loved is is like our greatest longing. Mm. Yeah. But it's also one of our greatest fears. Yeah. yeah. To to go to that place. Yeah. yeah. So how can, like a pastor that's hearing this and, and maybe up to this point, they're like, yep, yep. Like, that's I'm me. with you. <laughs> I'm with you, right? Like yeah. I need that, but they don't have it yet. Like how, mm -hmm. what can they do? What are, what's maybe one or two things, steps that they could take if they're difficult and challenging to yeah. maybe start to get to this place? Yeah, you know, I honestly, like going back to Genesis, back to the beginning, I look at what did God do in the moment of the deepest shame and, and guilt and fear that any human has probably ever experienced. Yeah. I love what God did. He comes and he doesn't say, what in the world did you just do? He doesn't add shame. He comes and he asks them three questions. And so I, I've actually, like, these three questions, I use them with my own self and with others. And the first question is, where are you? Mm. God asks them. And he's not like, where, where'd you, where, yeah. like, where are you it's geographically? <laughs> yeah. He knows where they are. Right. Uh, but he, but it's interesting also to see how Adam responds. He says, he doesn't tell God where he is geographically in location. He says, I, I heard you walking in the garden and I was afraid. So Adam responds with, here's where I am emotionally. I'm in a place of fear. Wow. I'm in a place of fear. Yeah. And so I think really simply what I encourage guys to do, and this can be, difficult it's not easy but to hear the lord asking where are, where you? are you and to answer with here's what i'm feeling mm. here's what i'm thinking here's what i'm wanting and desiring yeah you know and those can be questions we can ask each other like what are, where are you at what are you feeling what are you thinking yeah. what are the thoughts what are what are you wanting like, i, I want to know and that's what god models for us and these then the second question is who who told you that you were you were naked? Mm -hmm. Which the question can be: Whose voice are you listening to? Yeah, you listening yeah. to Satan? Are you listening to yourself? Are you listening to society? Are you listening to the spirit? Mm -hmm. And then he said, "What did you do?" So asking, well, how are you hiding? How are you trying to save yourself from, you know, the thoughts, the feelings that you're experiencing, and all that's going on in your life? Yeah, and those are really simple but beautiful questions that I think God asks not to add shame. Like what in the world did you do? Yeah. yeah. Who the, who are you listening to? You know, you, sh you shouldn't have listened to him. He's asking to bring Adam and Eve into relationship. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's what that does, right? Like your friend who is honest with you and vulnerable and starts to name the feelings, name the thoughts that are really true in his heart. As we do that, it it brings connection and relationship with right. God, with ourself, with those around us. Yeah. But, but that's a really simple place to start, asking mm -hmm. those three questions and, and starting to answer them. Yeah. I love that. I love the order too. I love that what did you do is last. Yeah. yeah. Where are you is first. That's a very um, personal and safe yeah. place to start. Not what well, you start with. What'd you do? Like that's what that's the parent. That's what I do with the, yeah, that's my the, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What'd you what, do? I told you not to do that. What did you do? I love that God set that example from the. I've never thought about that, but the the order of that feels really beautiful and intentional. Yeah. Well, you know, it's really, really even more beautiful too. Is it goes on from there, and in Genesis three fifteen, God promises Jesus, mm. and then He closes them with. With the, the, he clothes them, yeah, and then he protects them from eating of the tree of life. Yeah. And so there's just right in there, there's the gospel, yeah. and there's yeah. Jesus in the midst. But it's first these questions to yeah. draw them out, and it's it's not just simple, um, you know, like a, a Bible, like a Bible grenade. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes we, we throw that into people's yeah. lives, like, right. well, you know. Here's this scripture. Here's this truth. You should believe this. You should, you know, we throw these things that are true into each other's lives yeah. as, but it feels like a quick fix. It feels like, yeah, yeah, I know that, but, 
And so again, coming in in relationship by and starting with asking questions, I think is is well, it's biblical, yeah, and and it's relational, yeah, and it's healing, yeah. That's so really good. good. You just mentioned, um, uh, you know, kind of throwing Bible grenades, right, or slapping. I a, love that. Yeah, <laughs> slapping a Bible verse on it, and you know, take two of these, see me, see, see me in the morning, you'll yeah. be fine, yeah. right? Um, and I know that that there's this there's this tension between knowing that God is powerful, that God heals, that God um, is is well within his ability to do that for us. Yeah. But also like leaning into what we've learned about the brain, what we've learned about emotional and mental health, what science has shown us. And how would you recommend as, as pastors not only maybe seek help themselves, but also shepherd their people yeah. in that? How would you recommend just balancing that tension and kind of walking with wisdom in that? I think it comes back to how do we understand people and mm -hmm. ourselves and, and those around us. And, and I think one of the, the really important things is to recognize that God has made us body and soul. Yeah. So we, we are spiritual beings, absolutely. But we also have bodies and we're gonna have bodies for eternity. Yeah. We're gonna have resurrected bodies and uh, Jesus has a body in heaven mm -hmm. right now. Like that's how important our bodies are. Yeah. And I think just functionally in, in the evangelical church, we've actually, we've tended to, to elevate the spiritual above the physical right. in a way that has been actually damaging in term, you know, when it comes to our care for ourselves and each other, because we've downplayed the role of the body. We're kind of like, well, we just have to kind of put up with this body. Yeah. And, and, the, but the most important thing is our spirit. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we're, we kind of operate like functional, like, like Gnostics. Sure. Like yeah. The spirit is the most important thing. And that's really all that I'm going to speak to when biblically God looks at the whole person. Right. So I think as we recover, a, a, a biblical understanding of a person as body, soul, as an embodied soul, um, that, that we're gonna now care, we have a category that is, it's it's scriptural, it's, it's yeah. part of the gospel application to care for our bodies. Yeah. So our brains are, you know, and how our brains get affected by yeah. suffering yes. and sin, I call that trauma. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think, having a ba at least a basic understanding of the body and a basic understanding of things like trauma is is especially today really really important and and so helpful yeah and it's and it's really biblical it's yeah. just it's loving the way god yeah. loves us absolutely holistically yeah, yeah. go ahead go Were you <laughs> no, talk? No. no i love that you're making the connection between the entire body yeah i think that that's not something that we especially evangelically do very well where our physical health, we seem to have no problem going to the doctor and taking medicine yeah. for chronic illness. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you go the neck up, somehow mental health is mm -hmm. not, has not, I shouldn't say is not, has not until very recently been considered part of our total physical total. health. So I love that you're making that connection between body head to toe yeah, yeah, and that it's not different. I love that we're finally having conversations about neuroscience. What, what does a lack of sleep do to you yeah. on a mental level yeah. that doesn't just make you tired? It affects your mood, your energy, your ability to process anxiety and fear, to make good decisions, to yeah. operate a car. <laughs> like yeah. those are all whole body. Yep. So I like that you're not discounting or separating those but also it's still coming back to exactly what the Bible says about our bodies. Yes. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you see it in, in, I love the, the G, the story of Jesus in Gethsemane mm -hmm. and the picture that we have there of Jesus experience because Jesus was the only man, only human who had perfect faith. Mm -hmm. So here's this picture for us of what it looks like for, for if, if we were to have perfect faith to face something that feels impossible yeah. and so overwhelming, like mm -hmm. Jesus going to the cross and here Jesus says to his closest friends, hey, come pray with me. So he, with, even with perfect faith again, 
wants his closest friends to be with him in asking this moment of suffering, asking for yeah. help. Yeah. And then he's on his face before the father, like sweating drops of blood, crying out to the father, Abba, father, you can do anything. Yeah. If it's possible, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, yours be done. And you see that it's, it's a whole body experience that he's yes. engaged in there where his body's affected right? and he has perfect faith. Yeah. And he probably, we read that and it takes us, you know, a minute to right, read and right. he prays that same prayer three times. And yeah. and I think we can, if, if we're not careful, we can take that and go, oh, when we're suffering, we should follow Jesus' example and pray, not my will, but yours be done and, and kind of move, move on, on from our yeah. suffering. Right and hard time and, and be happy. Whereas you look at the timeline and I think Jesus could have spent probably two to three hours if you look at yep. the events of that night. So here he is for maybe three hours praying over and over and over again, yeah. Abba Father, you can do anything. Like you could change the circumstance, you can change me, you can, but if it's possible, let this cup pass for me not my will, but yours be done. And, and so that's perfect faith. And you don't think Jesus was experiencing anxiety in that moment? Hello. <laughs> right, right. Like, yeah, you read that and he, and he tells his, his closest friends, I'm Stay deeply, I'm deeply troubled yeah. in, in my right. soul. Yeah. The, the, the language is language of anxiety. Yeah. Like what would that read in modern times? Like, yeah. I am, I am freaking out guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And, and then they fall asleep and it, uh, one of the gospels says they fell asleep because of sorrow. Like I imagine them going, Oh my goodness. What do we do? If he's on his face sure. yeah. Yeah. like this, what does this mean for us? Yeah. 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 But, but again, coming back to, well, this is perfect faith. So I talk to people all the time who are, facing impossible scenarios and physically they're experiencing the effects of it. They're crying out right. and one, here's this model to pray, but also how encouraging is it to realize maybe when we're in the most desperate moments, physically feeling it and just crying out that that might actually be the most spiritual mm, yeah. faith filled, wow. Wow. Yeah. you know, experience of our life. Yeah. Because we're we're sure we sure do look like Jesus in those moments, but there's this lie that man, if you're going through that, you need to believe the gospel more. Your faith isn't right. strong Your enough. Your faith must be weak yeah. Yeah. in this moment, which speaks to kind of what we talked to you earlier. So about leaning into those that vulnerable place, yes, and that right. place where it's totally. kind of scary to go, you know. Yeah, but and there's you see Jesus saying, "Guys, come yeah. pray with me." Here, and he opens his heart to them. Yeah. I love that you just said that. Like, how much more Christ like can we be than be extremely vulnerable and say, I need help? If yeah. even Jesus did that right before he did the very thing that he came to earth to do, yeah. that is the most Christ like thing you can be is vulnerable yeah. and ask for help and say, I am right. stressed out. Yeah. I am not okay. Yeah. Because Jesus was not okay. Yeah. I love yeah, that. that. I mean, that that sort of stretches your our brains, right? Like, right. how is Jesus with perfect faith experiencing? what looks like anxiety in that moment yeah. and stress. Yeah. And in that moment, he could have very well be having a mental health crisis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we, that's what we would call it today. today right. And we would send someone to the doctor as, as right. instead of community yeah. and recognizing this is actually very Christ-like and actually probably ought to be very normal yeah. in, yeah. in this broken, fallen world that we live in. Yeah. Well, I know that, that you all are doing a lot of work um, at Gospel Care Collective about addressing this with pastors. And would you kind of just give us a little bit, because I, what I don't want is for somebody to be hearing this who is a pastor and being like, yeah, I, I have some things I need to address, but where do I go, right? You can't form those relationships overnight. Those aren't you know, quick fixes as far as a you know, I'll have a deep, vulnerable friendship by tomorrow afternoon. Right. <laughs> so can you- I wish, right? Yeah, I know, right? All you need is a Bible grenade. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Done. Um, so can you kind of just share a little bit of, of how you how you all help with that? And in particular, I know um, some of the work you do is around sabbaticals and, and rest and mm -hmm. having that be intentional. So yeah, would you mind just sharing a little bit for people? Yeah, we do. We have a team of counselors, professional biblical 
uh, counselors that do what we call gospel centered, clinically informed counseling. Yeah. We do it remotely, so we do it on Zoom and uh, or confidential video platform. So wherever people are, it's accessible. And and many of us have been in ministry. We've been pastors, um, and God's brought us into the world of counseling. So we understand what it's like to be in ministry, be be a pastor, be a ministry leader, um, and and needing that space, confidential, safe place to process trauma, yeah. process the stuff that it, it, yeah, it's really risky to tell yep. a friend or tell somebody that is so close to you in your church. I mean. Obviously, we encourage that, but there's some things that first it can be helpful at first to process with a professional. Sure. Yeah. And uh, so we have that. And then we also help pastors uh, plan and and then do coaching through a sabbatical. That's awesome. So helping pastors not over plan a sabbatical and not under plan it, yeah. but be intentional so that they can have three categories uh, rest experience reorientation and renewal and then three re-enter into ministry yeah. healthy awesome. so we try to help coach them through that and provide that for folks that's very cool and yeah. you know that you all have ministry experience because you alliterate all of the three things <laughs> right yeah, so, that's, yeah. that shows, shows my weakness that i it helps no, me it's, remember it, it's a really good formula it's a three-part alliteration I, bullet point <laughs> i am here for i feel it. like it's more a way yeah, we are at the southern baptist <laughs> yeah right? I feel like it's a way, yeah, to just say, like, listen, we get it. We're we get legit. it so much that we alliterate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Well, what, what I love to do, we, we do this thing on, on our podcast called The Final Five, which is rapid fire, quick, five questions. And so um, this conversation, I think, has been so helpful. We're going to link to, obviously, what, what you all are doing um, and just resources for pastors who might be in that spot of, of needing um, to take that first step. And mm. so... We appreciate that. Let's we'll do our, our final five real quick. The first one is this: one book you'd recommend to church leaders. Uh, the first that comes to mind is uh, "Failure of Nerve" by Edwin Friedman. Yes, it's on my list. It's a good one. Yeah. You have a we, good list. We can all read it together. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I'll take the second one. Last thing you listen to, music-wise, oh, on man. Apple or Spotify or uh, the National. Great band. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. On my list too. We have the same list. All right, all right. I like yeah, it. I like yeah. it. I'll just leave you two alone to like have a <laughs> to jam out. Yeah. yeah. Um, favorite piece of technology? My iPad. I like it. Fair. It's a way to get. We usually say no phone. You can't see your iPhone, right? Okay. But well, that's yeah. a good way to get around it. Yeah. I, yeah. Because I, I take uh, notes. I have notability on it. Ooh. Yes. And yeah. so I'm like a kind of a visual person. So yeah. I'll write notes. I'll draw pictures. Nice. That helps me. I I like it. A lot. We love for you to end with what is one thing that you would say to our audience of church leaders, one thing you'd like to encourage them? Yeah, I, well, so quote, there's so many quotes, um, but not to like, but I mean, Bible is always really helpful. So Galatians 2.20, like uh, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But this life I live, I live by the faith mm. of the Son of God. We can also read by faith in the Son of God. But what yeah. I love is you really can actually, it can be better translated. I live This life I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So mm. the faith of Jesus. Wow. Again, going back to the fact that Jesus had was the only human, only man who had perfect faith. And he didn't have perfect faith as an example for us to like strive towards. Mm which is how I used to kind of read that yeah, and right, live yeah, like. Yeah. He did that in my place. Mm -hmm. I like, can't. That's the gospel. That's the, like the gospel is good news because it's, I can't. Right. And every day I feel that and I, and I prove that. Yeah. But what's, so what's my hope? It's not do better, have more faith tomorrow. It's Jesus had perfect faith in my place. For and so me. my encouragement to pastors and leaders is, is remember your union with Christ. You're united to Jesus. That you're united to his faith, to his righteousness. All of his perfect obedience is yeah. given to you mm, that's good. because of the gospel. And that so Jesus is doing the it's his ministry is his ministry. Mm. In union with him, we get to participate in that. Yeah. And for 
honestly, that's the only way I can keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. That it's not mine. It's like the burden's not mine exactly. to like carry alone. It, it's, he says, are you tired? Are you weary? Yeah. Take my yoke upon you. Yeah. And, you know, and it's because my burden is light. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Yeah. He says, what does that mean? Well, it's him saying, this is my ministry in union with me. You get to participate in it. Yeah. So man, what a privilege that is. It's humbling, yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. There's the power of the of, of Christ. And it in takes that. the pressure off. And I don't have to do it because yeah. he already did. Yeah. I just need to yeah. get on board. <laughs> yeah. So where's Jesus at work? Where do I, I get to join him in I, that? Yeah. That's how I approach I try to approach every day. I need to be reminded of that. But like yeah. counseling every day, I'm thinking and believing, Jesus, you're already working in this person's life. Right. Yeah. You're present with them. You're speaking. Where where do I get to just Come join in and play a little yeah. part? Yeah. That's so good. So pastors that. get to do that. Yeah. Well, I feel like too that answers that fifth one because I think that's yeah. a really it's a really good note to end on, mm -hmm. even in the heaviness, even in in everything that's on a pastor church leader's shoulders to know that that is true for them. So yeah. Amen. we we appreciate your time, your conversation, uh, your wisdom. Appreciate what, what you all are doing as yes. well. And we'll certainly continue to help, um, you know, encourage people to come come your way to, to help get healthy. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. thank you, guys. This episode of the Church Leadership Lab podcast is brought to you by Ministry Brands, the largest provider of church technology software. Over 90,000 churches rely on Ministry Brands for their single platform solution that brings together all the digital tools a church needs. From online giving to websites to church management software and more, Ministry Brands is leading the way in simple to use, innovative solutions, all with the goal of empowering healthy churches. To learn more, visit ministrybrands.com.